This video will be about the Delphi, Indiana, Carroll County case involving the disappearance and murder of 14-year-old Liberty German and 13-year-old Abigail Williams. I will give a timeline of the events, the evidence we know they have, speculative evidence, evidence they probably have, and we'll end with conclusions based upon what we already know. Monday, February 13, 2017. Carroll County school systems only have a half a day of school this day because a staff meeting is scheduled. The girls are released from school at 12 noon. At 1 p.m., a family member drops the girls off at a trail near Monon High Bridge, an abandoned railroad bridge over Deer Creek. At 5.30 p.m., the girls fail to show up at a predetermined location to be picked up by a family member and are immediately reported missing. Monday night. A large search effort involving volunteers and multiple law enforcement agencies get underway. They scour the area in an attempt to find Liberty and Abigail. The search is called off due to darkness. 12 a.m. Carroll County Sheriff Tobe Blesenby says in a news release that there is no reason to suspect foul play or to believe the girls are in any immediate danger. The biggest concern is exposure to the elements. Tuesday, February 14, 2017. Tuesday morning, the search resumes with teams of volunteers and police officers. The efforts also include canine units and dive teams. At noon, searchers find two bodies about a half a mile from the bridge. 2 p.m. During a news conference, authorities announce the discovery of the bodies but give no indication as to their identities. They say for the first time that foul play is suspected in connection with this case. 4 p.m. Delphi Community School Superintendent Gregory Bryles releases a statement saying that the bodies found in that afternoon are those of missing Delphi Community Middle School students despite no confirmation from police. Bryles says grief counselors will be made available to students and staff. Bryles later says that security will be stepped up. All after-school activities at Delphi Middle School are canceled for the remainder of the week. 7 p.m. The Delphi United Methodist Church opens a vigil. Wednesday, February 15, 2017, 8 a.m. Autopsies are conducted in Terre Haute on the bodies discovered during Tuesday's search. Local authorities convene a meeting after the autopsies are complete. 10 a.m. Sergeant Kim Riley with Indiana State Police provides a brief update on the investigation. He says the autopsies are complete but declines to confirm the identities or discuss a suspect or person of interest in the case. He says police have received hundreds of tips from the community. Riley advises parents to keep a close eye on their children and to monitor their whereabouts. 3 p.m. Indiana State Police and the Carroll County Sheriff's Department hold a news conference confirming that the bodies found Tuesday are those of Liberty and Abigail. They say the case is being investigated as a double homicide. They say they don't believe that there's any immediate danger to the community. 7 p.m. Indiana State Police release a photo of a man reportedly walking on the trails around the same time as the girl's disappearance. Police say they want to talk to the individual, but stop short of calling him a suspect. Thursday, February 16, 2017, 6 p.m. Police set up a tip line for anyone with information on this case to call at 844-459. 5786. They say they've had upwards of 250 tips so far. 6.45 p.m. Funeral arrangements set for 14-year-old Liberty German. 7.45 p.m. Indiana State Police serve a search warrant in connection with this case at a, a home in Delphi. No arrests were made. Saturday, February 18, 2017. 4 p.m. A public visitation for the girls is held at Delphi Community High School. Sunday, February 19, 2017, 1230 p.m. Indiana State Police say the man photographed walking along the trail around the time of the girls' disappearance is a suspect in their death. Monday, February 20, 2017. Police say they're conducting a statewide manhunt for the man seen in the photo and tell Hoosiers to continue to provide information via the hotline set up for tips in the case. Tuesday, February 21, 2017. An official says the teen deaths could lead to security changes along the Monon High Bridge Trail. The changes could include the addition of security cameras. Wednesday, 
February 22, 2017, 10 a.m. Investigators hold a news conference to update the status of the investigation. Police reveal that Liberty German recorded video and audio of the suspect on her cell phone. Indiana State Police releases an audio recording of the man's voice saying, Down the hill. 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 Thursday, February 23, 2017. 12.45 p.m. Indiana State Police say they've received 3,900 tips in the case, with 1,900 of them coming after the release of the audio recording. A $9,000 donation from Representative Todd Rokita pushes the reward amount to $50,000. 4 p.m. Indiana State Police announced that the FBI has taken over the hotline in this case. Monday, February 27, 2017. Police say they've received close to 10,000 tips in this case. The reward surges to nearly $100,000. Wednesday, March 1, 2017, 718 a.m. Retired Indianapolis Colts punter Pat McAfee and owner Jim Mersey announced $97,000 donation to bring the reward money now to $200,000. Wednesday, March 8, 2017, Officials announced formation of a task force to explore safety options along Delphi's trails. Investigators say they're working with the FBI to build a profile of the suspect. March 12, 2017. Ronald Logan, the 77-year-old man who owned the property where the girls' bodies were found along Monon's trails, was arrested in Delphi, Indiana. When I called the jail, they would only say that he was arrested for violating his probation on a DUI, they would state absolutely nothing about the double murder case. February 13, 2017 After being released from school at noon, a family member drops the two girls off at Monon Trails at approximately this location here. After the girls had been hiking for approximately an hour, the girls made their way to Monon High Bridge. This is a picture of Abigail Williams walking on that bridge. The photo was taken by Liberty German. It was uploaded to her Snapchat at approximately 2 p.m. In this picture right here of Abigail Williams on the bridge, to me it appears that she is northward, that she is walking northward. And I say that for this reason. On the south side of the uh, bridge, the tracks keep going past the bridge. But on the north side, it stops and looks like this. So when I look behind her and I just see tracks continuing on, it looks like she's northward. Now, if she was walking northward, then her shadow, which goes directly westward in the picture, is out of whack. Because at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the, the, the sun would have been to her left-hand side. And her, and her shadow direction should have been at least a little bit to the east, rather than directly to the west. Now, I've never been to Monon Bridge. And I do not know exactly what it looks like. I used Google Maps and I dropped down on the bridge to get a look at that after seeing how the tracks went from the aerial. But if anybody's been to the bridge and can confirm whether she was northward or southward facing, it would help me a great deal. But if she was northward, you know, the shadow does not match. I just wanted to point that out. But if she was southbound, then the shadow matches exactly. So if anybody could help me out on that, please let me know. At some time after that photo was taken, a man approached the two girls on the bridge. He may have said something to him. Uh, I don't really know, but for whatever reason, Liberty German took him to be very suspicious and put her phone on uh, video. Now, on putting it on video, she at least got a little uh, video of the guy and a lot of audio, including what he had said to them up front, where he led him, and quite possibly the attack. These are the pictures of the suspect. Now, I want to talk about them for a moment. Now, these are the two pictures that we have of the suspect. Now, in the one on the left, and we'll call that photo A, it appears like he's got a head of hair. If you look at the top of his head, it looks like a part. It looks like it's just kind of combed forward, but it's got a part there. Now, he has a hoodie on. Now, on the right-hand side, that looks more like a hat to me. But if you look at where the hoodie goes up on his right-hand side at the shoulder, same as it is in picture one, it may or may not be a hat. I mean, the police would only say some kind of hat, but they would not specify. 
I don't know why they hadn't touched upon that, but it kind of looks like hair in one and a hat in the other. Now, on the picture on the left, photo A, it looks like he's got a brown shirt on. But the picture on the right, it looks like he has a fanny pack. And I think that they have said that he did have a fanny pack. And this could be very significant to the case. Now, for the reason that he had a fanny pack on, I would have to think that he had come prepped. That he had everything to carry out this crime on him. Including probably a handgun. Because if you approach two young girls that could easily run from you, you'd have to have them under duress. I'm assuming that he probably had zip ties with him. I think that it would have been less to carry and would have worked as effective as anything else. He probably or may have also had gloves. Now, at least to me, but in these two photos, it appears that the guy is walking with an abnormal gait. Now, this could indicate that he had had prior leg damage. Liberty German died Monday at the hands of the suspect. But Abigail Williams died Tuesday morning due to hypothermia. You know, being tied up in the woods after what she had seen and witnessed. You know, my heart really goes out to her and her family. And it bothers me deeply that there's a monster out there right now. It's reasonable to assume that Abigail would have lived if the search party would have been fully conducted the evening of their uh, disappearance. But I, I certainly do not blame law enforcement for that at all. I mean, because to them, they, they had no clue of what had happened. You know, they didn't know that the girls hadn't taken off, went elsewhere. You know, there was just no indication of what had transpired. You know, so I do not hold them, like, responsible in any way for her death. But it, it is something to point out that, you know, had she have lived, they, they probably would have had the killer by now. The, the evidence that we know that they have is a short video of the suspect, of him personally. I don't think it was very long, but that's where the pictures were taken from when she was putting it into her pocket. Now, they have a lot more audio than just down the hill. They have most of what the guy had said until Liberty's phone had died. And we don't know at what time that that was. They probably have his entry point and where he left from. They would know if he had a car. Maybe not what kind of car, but they should know if he had a car or had walked there. Now, they may have DNA as a suspect since it was sexually related. Uh, possible fingerprints most definitely clothes fibers, and possible hair of the suspect. You know, and again, maybe all of the attack up till Liberty's phone had died. Now, I doubt that there was more than one person. Uh, with the ground the way it is at this time of year, foot, footprints would have been easily seen. It also would have been easy for them to tell if one or more people had committed the act. So, I don't know why they're sticking to one or more people. The suspect knew the area. Um... I, I believe that he probably cased the place for a while. You know, Monon High Bridge is like a local teen hangout. You know, they go to their drink, party, and do whatever that teens will do. He probably waited for the right opportunity and found it that day. I think that he would probably live within 20 to 25 miles from that area to be there at about 1 o'clock or thereafter in the afternoon. Now, the crime was sexually motivated, and Abigail was likely his target after seeing the girls. If the suspect drove there, he probably parked at the cemetery, right by the woods, or on the driveway to the south side of the bridge, or was within walking distance of the place through the woods, although he could have parked elsewhere and walked the woods to the area, but if, if any part of it was seen by the public, that would have left him with a long time to get out of the area. I think it's doubtful that he took the girls somewhere else and then brought them back that night after they were dead. Um, to take the girls elsewhere, he could have dropped them off anywhere where they wouldn't have been found as fast. But to bring them back at night when there was a police search being conducted um, and to walk through the woods that far carrying the two girls wouldn't have been wise. You know, he would have had to use a flashlight in order to do that. So I think that they was dropped where that they were found. Now, Liberty was dead, and I'm sure that he thought Abigail was dead. You know, he, he wouldn't have let her live, and, uh, you know, 
to tell about what happened and give more information about the suspect. He, he came with the kit with him. I'm pretty sure that he had a handgun because, you know, a knife wouldn't keep two girls quiet with a phone. They could, if they could outrun him, scream, or call somebody, that would have been uh, plenty enough. If he had a handgun, he would have had him under complete duress. Now, it was a Monday afternoon, and the girls were out of school because they had a staff meeting that day and was let out at approximately 12 noon, but he was not at work. Now, this says he works a differing shift or is disabled. Now, I say disabled because I think that he walks with a weird gait, and that may have been from an accident that he had had, a leg injury, or something along those lines, if he's disabled. Now, he likely had priors, because given his age and how this crime had went down, shows that he had maybe had prior convictions. Now, they may not have been felony convictions, but he at least had other convictions, I would think. Now, strangulation was probably the cause of Liberty's death. You know, and again, he had, he had probably strangled Abigail and thought she was dead, but she wasn't. And I, I, I wish to God she had lived so that we would have this guy already, you know. But anyway, he, he had a handgun, possibly gloves, uh, maybe a condom. But if he didn't have a condom, then they do 100% without doubt have his DNA. They could even take that off of the hair that was on the body from the guy. Now, the property owner where the girls were found, Ronald Logan, was not home that day. Now, the suspect may have known that he wasn't home, but that could be because there was no car there if he was constantly watching the place. But Ronald Logan did not do this, and he has been cleared. Now, I've seen photos where he's in the same kind of clothes and standing in approximately the same way, but there, there, to me, Ronald Logan is not even suspect. He's, he doesn't even play into this, in my opinion. But if the guy was watching, he may have seen that there was no vehicle if he parked at the cemetery where he had to pa possibly pass his house if he was coming from the east. Or if he was coming from the west-hand side to the cemetery and seeing that it wasn't there, he could have pulled in with little or no one actually seeing him do that. This morning I seen that later in the day, they're going to re be releasing some new evidence. Now... This is probably evidence off of her phone, or it could be something that was dropped, but at this point, 30 days later, I'm doubting that it's going to be any vital evidence that will point directly to the suspect. You know, but that's just me. I don't think that the public can solve this. You know, there is no way for us to run a database on fingerprints, DNA, nor do we have the inside information that law enforcement does have. But I wanted to go over some of these points because I keep seeing the same people say the same things, pointing at the same people. Those people are cleared. Those people did not do it. Um, I don't think that anybody's looking at the right people. That's me. I, I don't think any of them are. I mean, my first thought on this was probably a sexual predator that was local. I was looking them over. I think absolutely everybody else was as well. And I think that anybody, I mean, even the people that we were not looking directly at, a lot of those people were questioned and looked at and cleared. So, whoever it is, uh, again, I feel that they are local. And I don't know why somebody has not looked at that picture and turned them in. If that person that's in that suspect's photo was anybody that I knew, anyone, I could look at that and say, you know, that looks a whole lot like Joe Blow Blow. I don't know why that hasn't been done. I don't know what the holdup is. But one remaining fact here is that this guy's got to be caught. And if I'm Delphi, if I'm the local community, I would not stop screaming. I would not get off of their ass. Because right now, uh, I don't know why the guy hasn't been caught. But he should have been. He, he already should have been, given the uh, evidence that I know that they have. It can't be that damn tough to find him. So, anyway, man, uh, everybody out there watching this, I appreciate it the most. Please share this video if you would. I just wanted to get this information out there, and I thank you all very much for viewing.